live. Christianity, true Christianity, is a standard by which everybody looks to live. So when they hear, when sinners hear another Christian, another pastor, somebody has fallen, they, they're disappointed. And a lot of time it is out of disgust that they put it out there because it's as if they now become confused. This is the light that I'm supposed to look to. What am I supposed to look to now for guidance, for morale? They're looking to us. They may not say, but they're looking to us for guidance. For something that is different. And that's why the word of God implores us at all times. Whatever we are doing, be different. If we are not different, we are confusing the world. The Bible says it, we are good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men. It makes sense we just step away and for everybody to see that I'm no longer a part of the light. More than we are there and we are confusing others. We are allowing others to put Jesus' name in disrepute. It's wrong. The gospel has appealed to such a cross-section of humanity that one must conclude it to be of universal attraction. More, of course, in the Western world. In this part of the world, Christianity is more the, um, as I said, the, what, what persons look to. Men who are wealthy have accepted it as their greatest asset, while those impoverished have accepted it as their only treasure. Men of letters, that those who are well-educated, and those unlearned alike have been transformed by its power. Why is this gospel such an attractive declaration and story? Simply because it pertains to both God and man. So what the compiler is saying, the, the gospel, it is so attractive because it is God-breathed. It is God's inspired word to us. And it is the way by which man changes, transform his or her lifestyle from a, a lifestyle of sin to one that is acceptable to God, revealing God's will for man and the good news of the kingdom of God. It is the only divinely comprehensive, life-giving philosophy. It is all of this because it has been prepared by the mind of God and not concocted by the finite and fallible minds of men. It is outside of our sphere. The gospel is more attractive, we have been saying that from morning, by example than by precept, by knowledge. As a sinner, views the wondrous transformation that the gospel has produced in the life of an acquaintance, his own desire for this beautiful life is stimulated. The beauty of the gospel was personified in Christ. He was personally the message of God to man in flesh and blood. He was the good news as well as the preacher of good news or gospel. Any person who bears enough of it to be truly converted cannot consider it anything less than the greatest opportunity of his or her lifetime. And we can say amen. The gospel, salvation, is the best thing that has ever happened and will happen to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what we have. It doesn't matter who we think we are. Without Christ, we are nothing. And brethren, that's why it is important for us not to say, me and nobody. We are everything. The word of God says we are a royal priesthood. Holy nation. 
man peculiar people. So why, why is it that the Bible, God himself, is saying this about us? And we are putting down ourselves sometimes to look good in front of a man. That, yeah, no, no, nobody. We must stop it. People are attracted to beauty. So when we can live and show others that we are royalty, they are going to want to be a part of this royalty that we are presenting. Praise his holy name. The beauty of this gospel is attested to by the fact that true Christian converts receive it so joyfully. Many embrace it as a thing they have so long desired. Some may never have associated it with that insatiable hunger for something until they found this gospel of their salvation. Brethren, there is a need, a void in every man that cannot be satisfied by anything else but God and his word. That's how we were created, because we were created to worship. And that's why we, instead of looking down on them, pray. When we see persons and they're cutting themselves, they're marking their bodies, they're doing all sorts of things, it's because they're searching. Searching, they have an emptiness, they can't explain it, but there is an emptiness inside because we were created to worship. And until we come in communion with the creator, we will continue to search. Praise his name. Please come to the mic, Brother Brown. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. What a God. I'm telling you, we as a child of God, come on, look at us. Hallelujah. We must live clean. We must live good. We must be the best Hallelujah. for God. Hallelujah. The word of God is there Praise that we are reading and Hallelujah. we're hearing the word. We must follow the word. We must live by the word. I want to know what salvation done to others. Sometimes when I hear that, Lord, the man they fall. Listen what I'm saying to you. May I tell you the truth. Me not hide it. Me not believe so me can't go dog. You know why? I pay attention to God. I don't look outside of God. I look to God and God lead me to where he want me. If I take my focus off of God and look into the world, the world going to attract me. So I don't take my focus off of God. I look to God to lead me and direct me. Don't tell me that me can go down. I overcome those things. God give us power to rule the earth over sin and disgrace. So why are you going to heal to those things? Not at all. We are standing for righteousness. I feel good. I feel pleased about salvation. Sometimes I laugh. Sometimes I'm writing. I just laughing. I just worshiping God. Hallelujah. God never leave us nor forsake us. Praise his holy I feel name. good about Christian life. I never have it. When I was out there, I was turned fool. I don't know what I was doing. And God take me from there Amen. and put me where he wants us. I'm going to live this life. Don't tell me that I'm going to. I'm not Praise doing it. When I hear that a big man, your, your pastors, you're reading the word, you know the word, and you allow the enemy to attract you and take you out of God's presence. You're not ready. You need to check yourself. God, God live inside. You know, sometimes when I'm going out, and when I look upon the things of this world, the world upset my stomach. Hallelujah. If the world upset your stomach, why should the world tempt you to do the thing that is wrong? Come on, I am talking to you. We need to live a clean life. We are a holy person. We are a righteous person in Christ. We are the righteousness of God. We must live as according to the word of God. And if you stand upon the word of God, you can't go down. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Brethren, you know what, in essence, what Brother Brown is saying, just like couples are admonished to fall in love with each other every day. 
as children of God, we are to fall in love with him every day. Every day the gospel must become more and more attractive to us. Praise his holy name. The, the harmony and assurance that characterize a child of God cause the gospel. Listen, the harmony and assurance that characterize a child of God cause the gospel to attract others. The peace that passes all human understanding that embodies us, that alone must be able to attract somebody. You're always peaceful. You're always smiling. You're always talking positive. You're always encouraging others. That alone can pull somebody to Jesus. The person who is at peace with God and who is assured of eternal life. Brethren, it cannot be that I come to Sister Dose and I say, Sister Dose, are you saved? If Jesus should come tomorrow, would you go home with him? Boy, I'm not know, I'm not sure. So why are we serving him then? We must be convinced that if Jesus should put his in appearing now, we are saved. We are ready to go home with him. Praise his name. Praise his holy name. Bless his holy name. Because, brethren, this is something that we love. Hallelujah. I love him. And because I know that he loves me, he says nothing can pluck us out of his, his hands. Nothing can change his mind from loving us. Praise God. So even when trials come, look, look the trials in the face and say, look here. You're not going to allow me to see God in a lesser light. You're not going to allow me to curse my God because he is attractive. He is beautiful. And so we are going to roll back the curtains. And when we start rolling back the curtains, the, 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 the butterfly is going to start fluttering in our hearts. And we are going to start singing. And a praise is going to come on our lips. And we are just going to be lost in the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. Bless his holy name. Praise his holy name. Magnify the name of Jesus. Worship the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's why the songwriter says, brethren, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day. It doesn't matter what is happening in our day. We should stand and say to somebody, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done in his arms I will always feel protected in his God will never neglect me praise his holy name and when we are able by faith to speak to situations like this brethren we will never have a dull day the day is dull but on the inside there is a beauty Everything is around us is going wrong. But on the inside, there is a praise. Hallelujah. And that is what will attract those, even the most unbelieving person, will come. Because they see that there is something magnificently different about this God that we are serving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And brethren, that's what we are called to do. And we are not doing it of ourselves. We are doing it through Christ. Every day, he stands with us, walking with us, carrying us, that we can overcome, that we can be his ambassadors, that we can stand. All he says, be willing to stand. Be willing to look attractive for me. And if you are willing to look attractive for me, I will come alongside you and I will help you. Because that's what the comforter is all about. Praise his holy name. So we go to question one. Because we could go on talking about the goodness of God forever. Oh, go ahead, sister. No, sorry about that. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. My heart is indicted in a good matter. Hallelujah. I must tell you, I really anticipate Sabbath morning when missionary uncle is 
sharing out the word. I love it. Praise Not that God. I don't love others, but I love, she go really deep. And that's what really, you know, let me feel so joyful in the word of God. Like I saw Brother Brown just come in, exploding yes. in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise you Lord you Lord. know, as you said, we should let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Um, Tuesday, I went out and while I was going home, just as I reached my gate, opened the gate to drive in, a lady walked up to me. Your husband be sting me on my neck. Your husband be sting. <laughs> so I stopped there and I was looking at her. Cynthia, me got a doctor with your husband be sting me on my neck. So I don't answer her. Then she said, um, tell your husband, say, he be them down there sting me on my neck and whatever. I said, please, when you see, when you see him, let him know. Amen. And she did it again and I said, miss, when you see him, you let him know, okay? I'm a drive in. Suppose me behave in a irrational way with her. I don't quarrel with her or anything. Then Thursday, I went to St. Elizabeth, me and my husband, and we got there to look after business. When we went to this gentleman home, we were there talking, and the Holy Spirit led me to pray for him. You know what the man said? When I see you come in here, I know you're a woman of God. Amen. My spirit just take you. Amen. And I start to pray for the man and encourage him. And I said, you're a backslider. The man said, yes. And he started to cry on his sick bed. Brethren, if I had messed up myself with that lady right. and don't let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me, Amen. I would feel so embarrassed to go and pray for the, the, the gentleman. Sure. So let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. Whatever the circumstances, at time we are human flesh and we my err. To err is human, but to, um, to forgive is, divine. is divine. So this morning, let us forgive those who trespass against us and let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Question one. Thank you, Sister Dose. Thank you so much. Question one says, what aspect of the gospel should be stressed in order to win converts? And that's the scripture reading, St. Um, John chapter 3. And we are looking at verses 14 and 15 when Jesus said to those that he was um, his disciples and others, if I be lifted up from this earth, he says, I will draw, as Moses lifted up rather, because he made a comparison with Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. And when, because after they were bitten, when they looked to the serpent, what happened? They got healed. So this sin-sick world that we're living in, Jesus says in verse 14, and as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. As we lift up Christ before sinners, he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As we lift up Christ, he will pull others. He will allow his eternal life to take root in their hearts. Praise God. Praise his holy name. He says, and brethren, look at it. Uh, first Corinthians, second Corinthians, rather, 521, as we know, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The divine exchange took place all because we were willing to believe. So if even there's someone on Facebook this morning wondering, what should I do to, to get that which you're so excited about, this good news that you're talking to me about. All the scripture says, be willing to say to Christ, I'm a sinner. I need you in my heart. Take this sinful life of mine and give me you. That's all it takes. And once you're willing to continuously believe in God, then you are saved. That's, that's what, it's as easy, it looks easy, but that's what salvation is all about. Question two, did the gospel of Jesus appeal to men and women from all walks of life? Yes, in St. John chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, we see Nicodemus coming, and Nicodemus was a teacher of the Jews in St. Um, Luke chapter 19, 
verses 2 to 3, we see Zacchaeus, and the scripture made sure to say that Zacchaeus was rich. So we see another rich person coming to Christ. In Mark 5, 18 to 19, this is the demon-possessed man. Out, he was living with his family, a cast away in society. Brethren, even the insane man on the street, the Holy Spirit is able to save such a person. And we should be, <laughs> brethren, we ought to be so connected to God that if the Holy Spirit resonates in us to say, go and tell that insane man that Jesus loves him, we should go. Because the word has power to save even to the guttermost. It has power to save. So we see the demon-possessed man being delivered by Jesus. And in um, St. Mark chapter 7, verses 26 to 28, we see the Syrophoenician woman. She says, even the dog. So yes, I'm a Gentile dog. I'm a cast out. I'm not yet a part. But even the crumb. I believe that you are my master. And she received the, of her faith caused her daughter to be healed. So everybody. The, the, the gospel does not exempt anyone. How are Christians used in making the good news attractive to others? Or lifestyle. And I like um, Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Brother uh, Dalton alluded to that this morning. John and Peter, we know the disciples were unlearned men. And they stood in front of the Sanhedrin, the brightest of the bright in the society, the educated men. And PhD, doctors, the lawyers, the language man, you would stand in awe. They knew it all. But when Peter and John stood under the Holy Spirit, these men had to say, step back. But these are unlearned men. These, but they had to say, these men have been with Jesus. It doesn't matter our family background, where we were born. As Brother Dalton said, that's not important. It doesn't matter how much money we have in the bank. It doesn't matter which school we study. At the end of the day, somebody should be able to stand in awe. Not like when Peter, because they can say these men have been with Jesus, but for the wrong reason. But Because remember with Peter, it was because Peter was denying Jesus that they said, but you were with him. I was saying you're denying him. But here we are seeing Peter and John, their lifestyle, the same Peter, he was now converted and their lifestyle was so different that they had to stand in awe and say, wow, you're different. I pray today, brethren, that as of today, our lives, we don't have to open our mouth, but our lives, persons can say, I want your Jesus. I want what Jesus has done through you to do in me. Praise his holy name. Somebody who is sick can say, take me to Brother Brown's Jesus. Somebody who doesn't know where the night's dinner is coming from can say, take me to Sister Dow's Jesus. Somebody who has children and they're struggling the wondering, how am I going to send my children back to school? The mothers, they can look to a Sister Carlin, they can look to Sister Venetia, they can look to Sister Cole and say, wow, I want the Jesus that has sent your children to school. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They can look at a brother Brown and say, I want the Jesus who is able to keep you in a 
volatile community that can allow you to go and speak to God men. The boldness that you have in Jesus. I want that boldness. Praise the name of the Lord. But brethren, we must be willing to stand. So it means when the tough, when, 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 when times are tough, we have to get going with the tough as well. That Jesus can make a testimony out of us. That persons can say, I want your God. If we keep on running away when the, 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 the tide gets high, we will never be able to be a magnet for Christ. We can never pull anybody to the kingdom. But when we overcome, we can stand before kings and say, this is what God has done for me. And he's able to do the same for you. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. As I close the, the lesson, because it's just about that time. This is what God has called us to the brethren. To be a magnet in a dark world. That pulls even the man who is in the deepest miry clay can have hope that this Jesus can do something for me. Let his beauty, as the songwriter says, in the darkest of night, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us. That even if someone doesn't take up, physically take up the Bible, they can know Christ. By the lifestyle we live at home, in our community, in the taxi, at work, on the road, wherever we go. It is one Jesus that we carry. And it's the Jesus that died on the cross for our sins. Have a blessed Sabbath.